Hi everybody, welcome back to the Crumbs and Doilies Bakery here in London. Now, I am so excited for today's recipe and this is going to be for a Tres Leches cake, which is a Mexican cake and it translates to three milks because we're going to bake a sponge and then we're going to pour on a combination of three different milks. Now, I have always been a little apprehensive of this recipe because it's an awful lot of milk and I always thought, oh, I'm not, mm, it's going to be soggy, it's going to be milky, but loads of you have kind of requested it and so I thought I'd better give it a go. So I looked at loads of different recipes, tweaked them here and there, came up with something that was pretty good. So I brought it into the kitchen and one morning at like nine o'clock, <laughs> Sam and I sat down and we ate Tres Leches cake for breakfast and we were both so surprised at how amazing it is. It is really light, but it's also like kind of moist, but not stodgy and it's creamy and smooth smooth and vanilla-y and it is absolutely delicious. So I cannot wait to show you guys how to make it and you've got to trust me on this, okay? Because I know it looks like an awful lot of milk, an awful lot of liquid, but it is incredible. So let's get on and we need to start by making a sponge. Now this sponge needs to be able to absorb all of the milk that we're gonna add. So it's a very particular type of sponge. It's a little bit like a chiffon. It's not got any butter in it. We're gonna get loads of air from the eggs. We need to start by separating our eggs, so our egg yolks from our egg whites. If you have a little look in the description box below, I have given you a few different options depending on what size cake you wanna do. Um, so I'm going for a four egg here, but I'm gonna give you like a, maybe a six and a three, because maybe you just wanna make a little one of these. So I like to separate my eggs uh, using the shells. So just breaking it in half and just gently pouring it between each shell. And as you probably know, I always do the whites into a, in a, into a separate bowl so that I never get any egg in there because if you get egg into your whites, it doesn't whip up properly. So you don't want any fat going in your whites, no butter, no egg yolks. So into our yolks, we're gonna add some sugar. And now we're gonna whisk these together for about three to four minutes until it's really kind of pale and it'll thicken and you'll see what I mean. So I'm using my electric whisk, but you can do this by hand. Okay, there you go. So you can see it is really lovely and pale. It's much paler than it was when we began. And the sugar's also started to dissolve, which means we're gonna much kind of smoother cake. So now we're gonna add some dry ingredients. So we're gonna put in some plain flour and I'm gonna add it in two halves. And I'm gonna gently stir it in. So it's like folding technique, basically. I don't want to overmix this. And once it's all incorporated and it looks nice and smooth and even, we can add the rest of our flour along with a little bit of baking powder and some salt. You know how I think salt is super important in baking and cooking because it brings out all your flavors. So again, gently stir that through. Now it's pretty thick at this stage and that's exactly how it's supposed to be. So we're gonna add some milk. So a little bit of milk going in along with vanilla because this is quite a delicate cake. So vanilla is the perfect flavor for this cake. It goes really well with the sweet milk at the end. And then again, very gently, just fold through that liquid and that vanilla and it's already starting to smell so delicious. You are gonna love this. So once that is all nice and smooth, we need to head on over to our egg whites. So I'm gonna put this to one side and we've got our egg whites in here and we're gonna start by whisking these up till a soft peak. So you can see here how they're very nice and fluffy, but they're not holding any kind of peak in there. It's nice and kind of soft and floppy. So now we're gonna add a little bit more sugar and keep whisking on a high speed until the sugar has completely incorporated and it has held stiff peaks. We've got those lovely peaks there, you can see. 
sticking up on end here. So now it is time to incorporate this into our batter. Now we need to do this very carefully because this is quite stiff and this is very fluffy. So we're going to fold it in and we're going to do that with a metal spoon. Let me just dispose of my spatula. So I'm going to do this in thirds. So I'm going to start with one nice big spoonful of the egg whites and I'm going to cut that through folding it and this is going to loosen the batter. And once your first spoonful of egg whites has incorporated, we're going to add another spoonful. So we're folding this all the time because what we really don't want to do is knock out all that lovely air. And when it's ready for the final bit of egg, get all of that in and just keep stirring until all of the white's gone. Any streakiness, just keep stirring. Be patient, I know it can seem like it's taking a long time, but it's worth it. And that is looking pretty delicious. It's really light and it's fluffy and it is smelling awesome. So now we need to get it into our tin. And I am using this it's enamel, this enamel pie dish here because this is the kind of cake that we're going to serve in the dish. We're not going to take it out. So you want something a little bit nice, so like a casserole dish or a glass dish, it's going to be perfect for this. And all I've done is I've buttered the bottom. I've not buttered the sides because that can cause this cake to pull in on itself once it's come out of the oven. So a little bit of butter on the bottom and then just pour in all of your butter. And once it's all in, I'm just going to use my little offset palette knife just to even it out to make sure it's nice and level before we bake it. And we're going to pop it in the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes until the skewer comes out nice and clean. And then I'm going to turn the oven off and I'm going to open the door and I'm going to let it cool down for 20 minutes with the door open. Okay, so cake is out of the oven. It's cooled down for about 20 minutes, but it's still a little bit warm, which is the perfect time to add our milk to it. So we need to start by mixing up together our milk mixture, which is a combination of three milks, so hence the tres leches. We've got condensed milk, evaporated milk, and regular whole milk. So we're gonna whisk all those together in this jug. Mmm, I love condensed milk so much. I think it's the king of milks. It's so sweet and delicious. So give these a good whisk together. And now, before we pour it onto our cake, we need to make some holes in it. So you can do it with a skewer or a fork. We're gonna pierce the cake all over. And make sure that you're getting right to the bottom of the tin because we want this liquid to soak all the way through it and you can feel how kind of bouncy this cake is. Now I think <laughs> that's quite enough holes, so let's pour on this milk. We're going to go nice and slowly, let it absorb as we go. And this is exactly why when I first made this, I was a little bit unsure because I just thought, oh, look at that big pool of milk on top, but it is gonna soak in. So the best thing to do is to cover this in a bit of tin foil or cling wrap and put it in the fridge, ideally overnight. And in the morning, when you come to it, it'll be really lovely and moist. A little bit like this one that I made last night and I had soaking overnight. And you can see all the milk has absorbed and it looks really lovely and moist. So now we're gonna finish this and top it so that we can eat it. So the topping for this is simply a Chantilly cream, which is double cream with a bit of icing sugar to sweeten it. And so we're going to whip it up to a very soft peak. And 
when you're whipping your cream, make sure that you don't take it too far because when we spread this onto the cake, it will keep kind of working it and it might split it and it will go too airy. So you can see it's lovely and soft and creamy and smooth. So all we need to do now is get it onto our cake. And now toppings. There are different types of toppings, so I thought I'd show you all three so you can choose what you like to do. First of all, we have strawberries, which is the thing I found most when I was looking at recipes. Just some lovely fresh strawberries, so you want to put these on just before you serve it. I fanned mine out a little bit because I was feeling kind of fancy, and we would just place a few of those on the top, and it looks really beautiful. Especially if this is like a dessert and you brought this out at the end of a meal, this would look lovely and it's nice and fresh against the creaminess of the cake. Or maybe you want to go a little bit more fun with some sprinkles which would be great for a kid's birthday or actually maybe an adult's birthday too. And lastly, my favourite option which is cinnamon. So I've just got a tiny little sieve here and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon over the cream. And all that's left to do now is eat it. <laughs> so I'm going to use a dessert spoon and I cut myself a big old chunk of this. Oh, it looks so kind of fluffy and you can see the moisture in there but it's not like in a pool of milk how I thought it would be when I first made it and we've just got to try this guys mm. it's absolutely heavenly like it's so Moorish and it's light and it's sweet but it's not sickly it's creamy and smooth and honestly the cinnamon is like the perfect match for it but you know go for the strawberries and sprinkles if you want but if you want my recommendation cinnamon all the way oh guys you are gonna love this please please make it it's perfect for like a picnic because you can just take it in the dish you don't need to worry about slicing it or anything like that or it's great for a dessert as well this is honestly and I'm not even lying this is my new favorite cake and I will be making this for like every dessert for the next I don't know, year until I find another cake that replaces it. So please, please, please have a go at it. Let me know how you get on. Let me know what your favorite topping is or if you want to do something else with it, using different milks or something. Um, let us know how you get on over on Instagram using hashtag Cupcake Gemma so we can all see and share your photos. And make sure that you subscribe to our channel as well. The subscribe button's down there along with a little bell, which means you'll get notifications every time we upload. Um, go and obviously check out CupcakeGemma.com for all your baking utensils and all our baking kits like the amazing rainbow kit which is standing right behind me <laughs> and we'll be back with another recipe for you guys soon. Until then, I mean I should probably share this cake with everyone that's here but I kind of don't want to. <laughs>